how how would you say um as we move forward and and I, I know right now there's also this discussions between the ethereum camp and the, and the cosmos camp um which is uh, app chains um and uh, app chains versus rollups basically um, mm -hmm. and then celestia um how does that fit into this debate um because it is a cosmos chain but it's also implementing rollups right so it's kind of like a hybrid of both um, maybe you can explain a little bit the, the, the whole architectural design of, of Celestia um, and how it's currently um, being built. You're, you're mute right now. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> One thing to start off with is that uh, the team at Celestia and the founders have this really, really strong, I would say, culture of like modularism, like not maximalism, or just generally against this idea of maximalism in the sense that we do believe that there are going to be like many solutions and many ways to build things. Whereas I feel like what you start seeing happening somewhat in the Ethereum community and for sure, obviously in the Bitcoin community is this, this feeling of maximalism. And, it's, and it seems that when you have a group of people that are like really financially invested, but they're not invested for the actual use cases that were that some of us like actually care about, then they only care about the financial aspect of it. And they don't actually care about the other things like the political or the humanitarian or the actual like positive benefits for society. And I think like when you start seeing people that are too attached to that, then they lose sight of kind of like what we're all here to do in the first place. So I think I will like, you know, start by saying that, but like beyond that, as far as the actual infrastructure like how this stuff actually works from the perspective of a protocol or from a developer. Uh, one very good analogy that I, that resonated with me and that makes a lot of sense um, might be to kind of like look at the evolution of blockchains that we've seen so far. So what we had early on was the first blockchain was, you know, Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin, you also started to see other similar chains that would that came before ethereum but most of these chains if not all of them were just app specific chains and if someone wanted to build out a new application they had to build a new blockchain or fork someone else's blockchain and deploy that from scratch they also had to bootstrap um, a network you had to bootstrap a community validators uh, miners and all of that stuff so the barrier to entry was like really high but also the use cases weren't very There weren't that many use cases. They were pretty much all just financial use cases. And then I think the next evolution, obviously, was Ethereum, where you have this, this machine that everyone can share and you can deploy your own application. You don't have to bootstrap all of these things. You can literally just write a smart contract, deploy it, and you now have a way to kind of uh, build out your own idea. Now, if you look at the evolution of computing, you, you see a lot of uh, similar things in the sense of kind of how that evolved. Because when you first started, uh, I would say like in the 90s and you wanted to build a website, you probably needed to either have your own server or use someone's server that existed physically and have it all set up. And it was quite a bit of work. Um, and then what we saw that have, that evolved from that is that you started seeing this idea of shared hosting. So we had DreamHost and we had GoDaddy and we had these other things that were around where you could basically share hosting and you could deploy your website and you could kind of share this, this server environment with other people. Now, there were a lot of trade-offs to this because you didn't have full control over the environment and a few other things, but it did And that enable a similar type of idea is kind of how Ethereum enabled people to share a blockchain, shared hosting, enabled you to kind of like share someone else's server without having to bootstrap all this stuff. Now, what happened after that is like we saw cloud computing, but most importantly within cloud computing, these idea of a virtual machine that anyone can spin up and you have this brand new execution environment that you can, you can install whatever you want. You're not limited by anything. You can do whatever you want, really. And I think that's what we're starting to see w happen with blockchains in the sense of not only is that becoming made possible with Cosmos and with um, this idea of these sovereign chains or even just rollups on Celestia, but the scalability that comes with that means that we're all not sharing a single execution environment like with Ethereum where you have you know, what, like tens of thousands of smart contracts, maybe more, and everyone's just sharing that one compute space. I think if we want to scale this, it just makes sense for us to be moving in the direction where we have less computation being shared between, you know, less applications. So with, with Celestia, the core thesis is that if we separate 
all of these layers completely and we allow each layer to specialize, then we can have a more performant and more scalable system. So when we say like, what are these layers? Well, we're talking about consensus and data availability. We're talking about settlement and we're just talking about execution. Now, the, I think the main difference though between Celestia and, and anything else is that Celestia just doesn't even have the concept of, uh, of execution or settlement at all. So it doesn't even have the option. So you can't choose to do that at all. So there is no, um, there is no settlement. There is no execution. The only thing that Celestia does is allow you to post data and then and, and Celestia orders that data. There is no verifiability of, of that data. There is no execution or anything like that. And, and that allows a lot of different use cases because then you have a lot of different things that can be done to choose the stack that you want to work with, choose the execution environment, choose the ecosystem that you want to work with. You're not constrained to Ethereum. You're, you're not constrained to anything, really. You can deploy fuel. You can deploy um, I, even Solana sea level. You can deploy EVM, Optimism, Arbitrum, whatever you want. And you can either deploy this. You can deploy it in a bunch of different ways. So you could deploy, obviously, as a sovereign rollout, but you can also deploy something that's called Celestiums, where you're kind of leveraging Ethereum as the settlement layer and you're using uh, Celestia as a data availability and consensus. You could use a, an existing settlement layer that's built specifically for Celestia that you're going to see something soon uh, come out. But there's just there's about five different ways that you can build. Um, if you look at my pinned tweet, I think I've, I have something about that as well there. But, um, but yeah, I would... Can, quite a can, nuanced topic. <laughs> can you see my because I just shared the screen? Can you can you see that? Yeah, You're yeah, yeah. Sharing, yeah, I'm just sharing your um the tweet that you made. And I think this is the whole visualization of what you just described, right? So you have the execution layers on top, um, and then you have a settlement layer, we have the consensus layer, and then you have a data availability layer, and then that's where Celestia plugs in, right? So you don't depend uh, and you have uh, more flexibility and you can um offload that um that traffic um so yeah i think this is a good visualization of what you just described yeah.